We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Welcome seniors, class of 2020. This is your launch for the distance learning experience for U.S. government. Today, we will discuss the promises of democracy and the U.S. Constitution. My name is Ms. McKenzie, and I will be your virtual teacher today. During the school year, I teach U.S. government for D.C. public schools at Ron Brown College Preparatory High School. Go Monarchs! I would like to give a special shout out to the young kings in my first period class, especially Colby Powell, Kyrie Chambers, Reynard Alexander, and Dewan Cisse, who have continued to produce hard work and results as online learners in my class. I bet you will too. Are you ready? All right, let's do this. So, I just read one of the single most recognizable texts in U.S. history. Of course you know what it is, the preamble or introduction of the U.S. Constitution. These famous words were first drafted by James Madison and the framers of the Constitution at the Philadelphia Convention, and they set the foundation for our country's promises as early as 1787. Think back to Unit 1. The founding framers threw off their political bands with Great Britain for what they saw as tyrannical rule and swapped it out for a system governed by the people. In 1787, the definition of the people was pretty exclusive. Who exactly were the people, you ask? Well, here are some questions that may help you figure that out. Who lived in the new United States of America? Whose voice was represented in planning the new governing system? Who could vote? Who could be president? Who could own property? Whose life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness was protected? Again, who are the people in 1787 and are they still the people today? Has the definition of the people expanded as history continues? No matter who the people are in 1787, the framers made them and future generations key promises and gave the people authority to hold their government accountable for not fulfilling them. This leads us to our key question. Does the Constitution keep its promises? Is the Constitution keeping its promises in 2020? At the end of this experience, you will write an argumentative essay answering this question. Investigating the Constitution and current events will be a great place to start. Keep your news app and your third eye open for this one. You might ask, Miss McKenzie, where can I find these promises? Our Constitution makes promises about how leaders will rule and citizens will be protected. As you engage with this unit, you will read four parts of the Constitution, the preamble in Articles 1, 2, and 3. Let's quickly review what they are. The preamble is the introduction of the Constitution and its goal. It provides several promises as we will dissect shortly. Article 1 discusses the legislative branch or our Congress and their power and promises. They fulfill roles such as collecting taxes or declare war. Article 2 focuses on the executive branch or the president and his powers and the promises to our people. He focuses on fulfilling roles such as granting pardons for the imprisoned, serving as commander in chief of the military, and appointing Supreme Court justices. Article three focuses on the judicial branch's powers and promises. They focus on upholding the law and administering it objectively. But remember how the preamble began by the people, we the people. Ultimately, the power is not totally in their hands because the power to choose who fulfills this promises is in yours. The power is in the hands of voters. 
The framers of the Constitution intentionally put the power to rule this country in the hands of few who are chosen by the many. This separation of powers was accompanied by a system of checks and balances. This means no one branch is more powerful than another and no branch can exclusively make decisions that alters the lives of Americans and compromises those promises easily. The framers also realized that they could not think of every power or right then, and so they gave the states the right to rule over anything not listed explicitly in the Constitution. These principles of U.S. government set the foundation for life in America. We see, feel, and breathe these choices and promises and see firsthand how they are manifesting in our world today. During this experience, you will evaluate our government system and leaders to determine if they are upholding their promises to all. Okay, so let me help you get started with the first assignment in this experience, our preamble close read. Turn to page three in your distance learning packet or visit the online site that your teacher has designed. Follow along with me and take notes as we dissect the key vocabulary that asserts promises to the American people. When you hear a promise, I want you to say, that's for me, and underline it in your text. I will also include the text on our screen as we read. Let's talk about these promises and if they're being fulfilled to the American people today. Are you ready? Pick up your pen and let's go. We, the people of the United States. This phrase alone is a radical departure from the way things were before the United States was formed. This phrase describes the nation as a single entity, as one, not by individual states, but as one formed entity, and it is created for and by the people in order to form a more perfect union. This suggests that the union was not perfect. More perfect suggests the constitution will be stronger because there will be a central government. Before the constitution, there were the Articles of Confederation and the states operated as individual entities. The constitution brought them together. Instead of states operating independently, this union gave them a way to settle disputes, nationally taxed, and defend themselves in a war. Establish justice. This applies to the legal system and the abstract idea of fairness. In a sense, the framers realized that the states trampled on individual liberties. The constitution created the judiciary that is superior to the states and prevented egregious state practices. The constitution is indeed the law of the land, but was justice is extended to all people in America? Ensure domestic tranquility. Domestic means inside the nation and tranquility means peace. If you put them together, the framers wanted to ensure people are satisfied. Are people happy and at peace in our nation? After Shay's rebellion, they were not and the framers feared government upheaval. Today, are the people happy? Or will they revolt to secure the blessings and liberties promised to them? Provide for the common defense. We are safe in this nation because of the active duty military and we are safe from invasion and attack because of their service. Do people feel protected in our nation at all times? Promote the general welfare. Is the common good protected? Think back to unit one. Has our government ensured that the actions of our government and people are best for the community? And secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Liberty is described here as a blessing, not necessarily a right. I wonder why. Certainly we want that blessing for ourselves and our children's children's children, just as the framers suggested. Do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. Finally, the people make this constitution valid and legitimate. Without them, it holds no power. 
Ultimately, the source of authority and goal of the preamble points back to the purposes of our government and our unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, let's put this in today's context. Is the U.S. government fulfilling the above promises for everyone in its borders? Are these promises extended to all people of all backgrounds? Who is left out? Are these promises fulfilled for our president in the same way they are fulfilled for you or me or that homeless man on the street? That's for you to decide. As you explore your materials, consider life in America in 2020. Consider current events you see here in the news around you or what's happening in your world. Are political parties interfering? Is the government fulfilling its promises to people? Are our leaders too partisan? Is the Congress passing fair laws? Can the Supreme Court objectively function and uphold the law of the land? Is the president using his power as intended by the Constitution? Have we all become a part of the people? You are the people and you have the right to vote and exercise your authority or offer your approval for candidates presented. If you have not registered to vote in the 2020 election, please do it now. This is your time to apply what we learn in this unit in practice. You can register at the URL on the screen below. All right, now let's jump into Article One of the Constitution and find out how our Congress is supposed to function. When you engage with this text, please notice the directions at the top, the digital extension that you can watch to gain more information about the text the vocabulary for your consumption and key questions for you to answer. If you want to learn more, please check out these two videos, What the Constitution Means to Me, Thought Provoking Play Debates, the U.S. Constitution, and Students Reflect on Promises of the Preamble. Both videos will help you write amazing essays for your teachers. All right. That's it. Thank you for joining me today. U.S. government, promises of democracy. Again, my name is Miss McKenzie and good luck.